Ready? I think so. Check this out. We have here a solar powered roof vent. These things are a direct replacement to whirly birds. And so with this here, it's typically meant for a home where it'll replace the box vent in your roof, but we have Container Modification World's framing kit that adapts this to shipping containers. In this video, Will and I are gonna show you how to install this. Follow along. I'm Channing McCorston, the container guy. Like I said, William and I are going to install this solar powered roof vent. These things are awesome. So they're made by uh, Canada Go Green. They're actually out of Ontario and it's a quite a, a nifty roof vent. So there's a, a few manufacturers of these vents out there and they're, they're kind of a solar panel attached to a roof vent, which is attached to a fan, but this is an all in one kind of purpose built solution and much more sleek especially if you're going to be installing this thing in your home but uh, in this instance here we do not like uh, the whirly birds that install on the roof of containers for one they stick up really high and our top lift squishes them when we go to grab containers but two there's often instances in saskatchewan here where we have rain driving straight down and no wind at all and that gets water right into your shipping container so this thing is still waterproof the frame gives you uh, about six inches of clearance for snow that accumulates on your container. And what's surprising is you'd think that snow would just pile up, pile up, pile up, but because this is a metal um, container, typically the sun beats on this all throughout the day and the snow, even in minus 20 weather, will melt and run off the container. So this is, this is enough uh, snow clearance for these units. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started on installing this. So William has already marked out uh, where this vent goes, but if you look here, these uh, angled profiles, what those do is they represent the upper corrugation on the roof. So what, when you set this thing down, you just match those angles to the upper corrugations, and then you know you have it the right way. So if you install this thing uh, 90 degrees, it is the wrong way, and then the holes that are drilled and screw into the um, upper corrugations will not line up. They will not be in the right spot. So set it down the right way. It should make sense once you set it down. The, the frame itself is designed as a marking jig and then just trace all the way around it and get to cutting. Look at this. We finally got William to wear a pair of gloves. So now that you're all safetyed up, we'll let you start cutting. like a surgeon with that thing. Like a glove. So yeah, that was a good cut. Now what? Oh, rivet it in. So a big thing to a big thing to note here is uh, you're putting a vent on the roof of the container. This is the absolute highest probability that um, something, a mod, a mod component that you install in your container is going to leak. So make sure you seal it up well. Make sure you use uh, a proper sealant that, um, even just regular silicone, what do we use? We use Cicaflex here up on the roof. So it's a, pretty much the most expensive sealant you can get, but when it comes to ensuring that we don't get phone calls back from our customers about a, a leaky roof vent, it's a, uh, cheap insurance policy. So what you want to do is you'll, on the high ridges, that's the only place where this, uh, this vent is actually going to touch. We'll want to put uh, sealant on there first. Then we will, uh, I guess we'll drill the holes first. So we don't get a bunch of sealant in our drill bit and then seal that up and then go all the way around. So. So 
William just drilled the first hole and then he set a rivet in there and that kept everything nice and aligned. He can do it again and then that ensures that by the time you drill all your holes, the rivets actually fit through the holes once you're done. Otherwise, the thing can move on you, especially if you went rogue and cutting your, your uh, opening there. But William did a very good job cutting that nice and straight and it just fit in there beautifully. Keep going. gone. So one thing to note, these metal shards rust immediately once they touch water. So you want to get them off the roof of your container. So whether you got a leaf blower or a broom or whatever, even if you, I guess, sweeten into your can, but um, dirty rag it is. So, but get those gone because that creates little specks of rust and it seems to just chew right into the paint immediately, especially with this new, uh, the waterborne paint that's done in China. It doesn't seem to be um, quite as good as the old tried and true oil base, but hey, helping the smog problem in China. That's something that was released, I think, 2018, 2019 or something. So they're nice and clean. Now we're ready for our Cicaflex. I think one of William's friends watched a video in the comments. Still not wearing gloves, eh, Will? <laughs> Hands of steel. Yeah. Hands burnt with steel. So that sealant there is going to get sandwiched between the vent frame and the roof of the container. Get her holes to line up and start riveting. So there's some, uh, I guess, some tiny little holes where the, the, the folded flanges meet on this frame. And so if the frame did come to you disassembled and that wasn't done, then just make sure that you are uh, sealing up all of that as well because the snow that accumulates will you know, get into those just tiny little gaps. So we're gonna use a clear silicone here and then we'll jump back to the, the Sika Flex. We can do the outside and we'll also install this vent. And so these vents, they come with a uh, a range hood filter and so it's a it's a I think stainless steel mesh range hood filter and that gets installed from the inside and acts as a bug screen so at night when that fan isn't spinning because the sun's not uh, beating on the solar panel any kind of bugs that could fly in there won't be getting into your container so that that seals that up nice and tight and uh, I guess, yeah, just for those who are concerned about, you know, easy access for insects, it, it provides you a little peace of mind there. And then you just slide it out. If it was full of moss or whatever, you can take it out of your container, shake it out and, and throw it back in. So yeah, we'll get to sealing this thing up and maybe I'll open up the box. So you really want to make sure you get a good uh, sealant job in the lower corrugation that spans between uh, where the rivets are because water is going to sit here and the only place that this water can go is that way and on the other side the only place it can go is the other way. So especially if you're installing this on a used container, uh, choose a roof section that's concave upwards. Like if your roof, you'll notice on most used containers they're dented so don't install this in a valley, install it on a ridge so that your water sheds away. And actually while William's finishing that up, we'll open up the box here. And so these always come, they used to be kind of ugly hats, but they're, they're pretty cool now. Actually I saw uh, Curtis was running around wearing one and uh, yeah, a nice mesh back hat. So um, yeah, anyway, order one of those to get a free hat. And so here it is, you got your, your warranty certificate. And yeah, it's a pretty neat and tidy uh, 
solar panel on these things. And so the solar panel throughout the day, it's perfect because during the day, the sun's beating on your shipping container. When the sun's beating on your shipping container, it's radiating heat inside and getting super hot. At night, you don't have the sun beating on your can, it cools down. So uh, this thing is direct, this fan is directly run from the solar panel. So there's no battery here. So that's pretty much the component that would fail, uh, especially in the north where the batteries are freezing. So it's, yeah. I guess, what do they say, like 10 years or I don't know what it is. I'll have to check on the box and maybe we'll add her to the video how long these things are supposed to last. But uh, we've been selling them for a couple years now and haven't had any uh, phone calls back other than one instance. And I'm not certain if it was this or a skylight vent, but if you're installing this on a shipping container and then plan on moving the shipping container, make sure that you uh, saran wrap or uh, shrink wrap this thing onto the frame or don't install the the solar panel until you get to its final destination so if you're uh, the container guy similar to ourselves that, that sells shipping containers and you're buying these to install and sell to a customer don't make the mistake of showing up at the customer's site and the solar panel is missing so make sure that you seal it up this container that we're installing this on we're in saskatchewan um, this one's either going to Phoenix Airport or Colorado Airport. So this thing has to put on tons and tons of miles. Um, even curious the way that we're going to package this thing up, whether it makes it. And so uh, cross our fingers. But yeah, we'll do a very good job to make sure they, they hang tough. But in the desert of Phoenix, uh, the containers are going to have tires stored inside, which can get hot and stinky. I think there's three of these things going on the roof to keep this uh, container nice and cool and not melt rubber. So all the holes in the frame are laser cut to match the, uh, the holes on the solar powered roof vent. Uh, you might have to chase them with a drill bit just to make them the proper size. But prior to just going ahead and riveting, you'll want to make sure that this thing is uh, sealed properly. So another very liberal bead of silicone here. Yeah, we can go clear on this one. We like the Sika Flex down where the frame meets the, the, uh, the, the, sorry, the roof of the container because uh, the UV resistance and all that. And we know it's uh, basically they use it in mine shafts and wherever. So that's the go-to brand there. Other ones, what do we use? A Tremco 100. It's like a polyurethane sealant. Uh, pretty much as you know, strong as two-part sealants. And I think they have a lot of movement in them too. So it was like, what is it, 100 or 140 percent movement? Yeah. So there we have it. Okay, let's um, not start in the corners. Maybe let's start with the. See if you get that one, and then the, the far one across. There we go, we got those two to fit, so. There'll be tiny variances in the, the manufacturing of either the ABS plastic or whatever this is. And also uh, when you're folding CNC laser cut, uh, galvanized, and then riveting this frame together, you know, a tiniest little millimeter might put the holes out, but just, yeah, chase them all with a drill. Don't be drilling through the galvanized frame. Just make the plastic reamed out so that the rivets fit. Start, it seems like if you start with the, uh, the, the middle holes and then work your way outwards, we're, we're winning now. So, almost done. It's probably rip those are wrong, actually. So it just stays there. Okay. So it's a 400 CFM fan on there. It's a pretty big fan and they move a lot of air. Uh, even the, the reviews that 
that we're getting from customers. They're, they're quite impressed with them. But what's super important about this, you can't just install an exhaust fan and expect it to exhaust air out of your container. You need to be pulling air from somewhere else on the CCAN. So this container here, it's gonna have three of these and it's gonna have uh, four intake vents installed on two on the end wall, two in the container doors, and that's gonna draw air nice and uh, down low and up and through the roof. And so that's super important is these things are typically paired with a set of big air 45 vents and uh, sneak peek container modification rails coming out with big air 30s and big air 60s. So a bit larger and a bit smaller, just depending on the amount of airflow that you need and how big of a hole you feel comfortable cutting in the side of your container. This tire racking here, it uh, actually works as good scaffolding to stand on. So here I have the range hood filter. This is actually a Braun range hood filter. And if you've measured the dimensions of it, you can buy replacements of these on Amazon, but you shouldn't really need replacements. Uh, they're not really filtering uh, any cooking oils or anything. They're just making sure that you're not uh, getting bugs in when the, when the fan's not operational. So this thing just slides in. sets there and now that thing's tidied up and ready to exhaust 400 CFM of air out of this shipping container. So we like these, we like them way better than whirly birds. Uh, like I said, we've, we crush whirly birds, but also we find that um, rain without wind ends up leaking uh, on the floor of the container and we've had better luck with these units here. So this is what uh, I endorse, if, you're, if you are going to cut a hole in your shipping container, I'm not a huge fan of cutting holes in the roof, but some people need it, especially in the lower United States. Uh, I'm from Canada again, so it's more cold that we deal with, not really the extreme heat. And so if you do need to exhaust a ton of heat out of your container, this is the best solution out there on the market at the moment. So hope you enjoyed this video, how to install this big air 400 solar powered roof vent from Container Modification World. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos of us installing components and modifying shipping containers, please subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notification. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.